Okay, welcome back. I had a request for the uh, the de Havilland chipmunk, which I have in my in my hangar. And this is two seat training aircraft from the uh, 1950s, I think, something like that. Okay, canopy does open. You can open it and close it and stuff like that. And it's quite a simple, basic little aeroplane. Okay, to learn to fly in. So let's take it for a whiz, shall we? Gonna take off clean, no flaps, centralise the controls. Ooh. We're gonna go for a quick fly around Sydney. It's a really, really super basic aeroplane. It's great fun to fly. Sydney should, should be over there somewhere, yeah. So we're going right in the tower. I think the Canadian Air Force had uh, chipmunks and uh, Australians probably had them as well, I don't know. RPM a bit high there. Super basic, there's only one throttle, fixed pitch propeller, there's nothing complicated going on here at all. We'll fly down to Sydney, uh, check out the Opera House, go under the bridge and fly back to here. There we go. Anyone who's ever been in the Air Cadets in the 1970s, 1980s will almost certainly, even the 60s, maybe have a go in one of these. In um, air experience flying can do aerobatics in them this little aerobatic thing you have to put the nose down pick up a load of power up to about 125 as I recall before you you would never do it over a city you can do it though it's a very very gentle little airplane to learn to do this in put the power on the way down Back in again, there we go. Watch your RPM, keep your RPM in the green. There we go, that's the RPM gauge, obviously. Flying over cities would be at a minimum of uh, 1500 feet, so we're down to 700 feet here, so that's not good. We need to get a bit higher. There's a bobby, we'll come in. Pinch as oh look the uh, artificial horizon is toppled. I forgot to uh, lock it in place. It's not an aerobatic, <sighs> which is a bit useless, isn't it? Really. I mean, if you've got the authentic aeroplane, you have to cage the uh, the gyro before you did aerobatic manoeuvres. Ultimately, is a bit odd on this one. This coming up to one thousand. 500 feet, but the fingers are like, oh, different. Okay. I'll get one of these wands and see if I can open the canopy. I did have it on a switch, but it doesn't seem to be working. There we go. Bit more noise going on now. There are the petrol gauges outside. Can you see them? That tells you how much fuel you've got in that wing, and that's the fuel cap. And same on the other side, we've got a little gauge over there. Oh, RPM is getting a bit high now. 
So we'll go under the bridge. that now so we haven't got to move it at the top link. Don't need it anyway we're playing DFR. The deck have had carburetor heat and got the car heat on as well. Do you want to look? Remember if the chipmunk had car best of it? Of course you can't remember. It probably does. Just time to warm air from the exhaust to the car so you don't get any icing. But in Australia, for goodness sake. Do we get icing in Australia? Maybe. Depends how high we go, I suppose. the bridge at 100 knots. To the climb. Trim wheel as well. See that down there? That's the trim wheel. You can wind the trim back and I'll bring the nose up. Wind it forward and I'll put the nose down and then so you can let go of the stick. It'll stay where you put it. It's trimmed correctly. And you can put the nose here somewhere. Just the RPM a little bit faster. That's the battery switch, that's the battery avionics for the you know, radios, the radios here and this is the transponder. So don't worry about that, forget all about that. Uh, it's all about that really later. Fuel tap down there. They don't have tow brakes in the chipmunk, they have um, differential braking, so you've got to put the clacks on a bit and then put in. Stuff and you can they do a nice mod actually for tow brakes for the chipmunk, but uh, the purists hate it, you know, the purists like it to be all old and really shit. But I, I believe in it's such a nice aeroplane, you may as well make it nice. You put a few normal things on it, like a task of the horizon that works with the upside down. Altitude, 2,100 feet. I, mean, I, I don't like that. That little one should be the tens of thousands, not a little fat one. But there we go. Let's trim it. Let's trim it. Let's trim it back from here. Because if the engine packed up in flight, you've got to practice um, being able to do forced landings and things, isn't it? You would normally practice forced landings. But I can 
I can actually put it can I? Shut the fuel off. Is it fairly well I imagine the fuel's got off and the engine stopped. Okay, it's not full drive back, you don't use any flats. I'm not sure we can make it, but that runway is 100 miles long, you know, we can't land on that. <laughs> so just give up flying, really. But what we don't want to do is fall short of it, okay, so we want to make sure we can definitely reach it before we start using any flaps, because we want the maximum glide angle. So we glide, I don't know, 60, 70 knots, something like that. We're at 60 knots at the moment, that's gliding really well. It can be the pilot's operating handbook that you stick in there. The flaps working? Yes, they are. Don't need them to We're needing them soon. So we know there's a descend and uh, not speed up. If you put the nose down, you're going to speed up with the side flip. So we put full right rudder in and start pushing the ailerons over to the left. We should be able to descend rapidly but without speeding up. So we don't want to speed up. We want to touch down at the right speed. How much of this is about 50 knots? I think the red zone there is just over 40, so you can land it quite slowly actually. Okay, I'm going to put some flaps in there. Put all the flaps in. We're definitely, definitely, definitely going to make it from here. Okay, I've got a full right runner in. Got the stick over to the left, the side slipping in. We're not speeding up, we're still at 60 knots, but the descent rate is massive. We're coming down at 1200 feet a minute. And we're at 700 feet. We're nicely lined up with the runway. Is anything we're, we're high? No, that's good. Altitude is my friend. Rottle is closed. Okay, so we're going to slowly centralise the controls. There we go. Still doing just under 60 knots. Full flaps, 50 knots, then we round out. Don't let the airplane land, just keep it flying above the runway. You have to keep pulling back a bit more, 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 you said, until it just stalls onto the runway. And that's it, you're down. The flight is over. Any tail wheel, you, you taxi it with the stick right back in your stomach and keep it there, keep that tail on the ground. So you don't want to be brain looping, do we? No, we don't. So, you can't break with these aircraft because it might go up in the air, the tail might come up and ding the propeller on the ground. So, you just got to wait patiently for it to slow down, which is why these aircraft operate best on grass because they stop much quicker on grass than they do on tarmac. Okay. And then we can taxi back to park. It doesn't want to stop on the surface, does it? No, we'll just taxi it onto the grass. Don't waste too much time taxiing, you spend so much time taxiing in aeroplanes and lots of fortune, cost you just as much as it does to fly. Right, there we are, we're on the grass. Flaps can come up, and the flight is over. Thanks for watching.